I'm going to uh, recreate yesterday's test of my first 48 volt run. Power's off, switches the center, cooling is on. I'm going to plug in the 48 volt power supply. It's got a pretty healthy fan. The current is just under 2 amps for cooling. I see 48.1 volts on my VOM over there and I see 19.9 .9 volts on the uh, Celsius reading meter. Over here we have a half inch nut inside my largest coil and I need to make the point this is the largest coil that I have that came with uh, uh, one of these four CVS ZVS driver circuits that I bought. This is two inch ID they go down to as low as an inch and a half and as I with a given piece of work in there the smaller the coil the more current it draws so uh, uh, this is probably the least advantageous situation right now I do not have these extra capacitors in the circuit okay so now I'm going to turn the power on to the nut I have uh, about ten and a half amps now after a few seconds it's already dropped to uh, 10 amps I'm just going to touch the capacitors uh, uh, wire here just to see what happens I hope I don't blow anything out up to 15 amps capacitors off just wanted to get that number temperature 427 rising rapidly I'm off by a minute. We're already a minute plus into the test. 47.9 volts. Now we're down to about 8, 8.2 amperes. Seven hundred degrees Celsius. Just a bit over eight amperes, eight hundred degrees Celsius. Check my MOSFETs. Cool. Capacitors a little warm. Nine hundred degrees Celsius. I'm just going to turn the lights off, see if you can see any glow. Just barely a bit of glow right there that you can see through there. I see it as an orange, you see it as kind of a whitish purple. We're about two and a half minutes into the test, thousand degrees Celsius. Turn the light off again. See a glow. I see a pretty good orange glow coming through there. Water temperature 82 from 66. 47.9 volts. 1050 Celsius, 8 amps. Obviously my camera's on a tripod and I didn't set things up so I could peek down into the uh, 
into my uh, work coil here, but I want to take the insulation out of there pretty soon and uh, and then uh, see a peek, see how the camera thinks of it. One thousand ninety Celsius. Water eighty nine. Current. 8.2 or something like that. 1100 Celsius. I still ought to be able to get double the current, right? And not blow out my power supply. Check the wires. They're still nice and cool. These are the DC output wires from my power supply. I thought they might be too small and heat up, but they're doing fine. Slowing down now, 1116 Celsius. Just real quick. That's what it looks like down in there now. Went down to 1070, 1068, so on, very, dropping very quickly without my insulation. That's another thing I need to point out here is that uh, I have insulated around this with KO wall, and of course that allows me to get the temperature way up. But one thing that I didn't mention is that in addition to insulating around the KO wall, I found that the fan, make sure I'm, yeah, you can still see things, that the fan here was blowing air out the side and actually blowing air at my work coil and through the slots in it. So I added this little board and some insulation so that no moving air is getting over to the work coil area. 1,032. Well, okay, folks, let's see what happens if I add those capacitors. Check my MOSFETs. They're warming up. Not bad. These capacitors are probably 115. Here we go. Current went up to 14 amps. Whoa, the temperature's really going up now. 1065, 70. Wow, ooh, the wire's getting so hot I can't hold it. It just it got too hot. So there's something going on here with the inductance of this whole thing. These wires, even though they're only maybe 14 gauge, uh, uh, shouldn't get hot that fast. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Something that's uh, beyond me currently with, uh, with understanding the uh, power in this resonant circuit. But we... Uh, very close to 1100 Celsius. I, when I put my insulation back on, I guess I just, you know, didn't close things up as well as I had before quite. It would be nice to see 1100 again, but that's where we're at. <laughs> water, 109. I don't think I've ever had the water quite that hot before. And I'm not blowing a fan through my heat exchanger either. This is my 48 volt power supply, which is uh, right there, which is a Unipower TRP7000, which is an older model, rated at uh, 48 volts at 26 amps. And just a final set of numbers here. Uh, we're uh, about, uh, about eight minutes into the test. We're at uh, 1,090 Celsius. 47.9 volts out, 8.2 amps. Uh, what else can I say? Water temperature 113. 
and I think we'll end this test there. This is uh, just a uh, today's view of uh, my general test setup. I've still got three car type batteries underneath my setup, but today I'm using the uh, uh, 48 volt power supply, first time on 48 volts. Uh, this test bench over here has got a, uh, it's a smaller test bench that I've been using uh, with a 12 volt garden tractor battery when I first repair a unit and you can see a number of them lay in there uh, just to see if the thing works at all and if I'm doing any uh, you know just basic uh, learning stuff. Um, you can see some other coils around here there's a one inch coil I've made which doesn't do much for me it doesn't want to oscillate so far maybe there's more work to be done there there's a more typical one and a half inch uh, uh, coil a one and three quarter another one and three quarter inch coil there and this is a, a two-turn coil that I tried out uh, and I uh, well as a matter of fact that one didn't oscillate <coughs> My one inch coil does oscillate, but that runs my frequency right up to about 150 kilohertz. So I figured that was the opposite of the way I wanted to go. So that's, uh, I don't know, it isn't in the scrap heap yet, but close. And then lastly, this is my little DS0112 scope. <coughs> that's cool in that uh, it's a neat little single channel scope, but what it does for me here, I can set up menu items and read frequency directly and then up here is my ancient uh, Tektronix 422 dual channel 30 megahertz scope that I use to look at traces and stuff and I did look at the traces for the uh, 48 volt power supply and uh, they're really uh, good strong gate signals and as a matter of fact maybe I will turn things back on just uh, long enough to get uh, a good gate signal. Here's the gate signal from one channel and you can see it's a pretty darn good square wave and the point to be made here is that the higher the input voltage to this circuit the more square that wave looks and that's why the MOSFETs can remain pretty darn cool even as I increase the voltage and the power. Interesting that I just turned the uh, power back on to show off the scope trace and about a minute ago and you can see that baby is reheating really nice and quickly
Again, the capacitors are probably 120F. MOSFETs are, oh, 100. I think what I'm going to have to do is to add a separate uh, fan on top of this set of capacitors, and I don't know what I'm going to do with the wiring. Maybe I've got to uh, twist the wires because yeah, it's not just current. Well, I don't know whether it's current or not, but I'm going to have to go to bigger wires and do some twisting and, uh, and, and cool that whole works. Thousand seventy six. I don't think we're going to get to eleven hundred. I had the insulation packed in there better the last time, and that makes a big difference. So anyway, that's enough of that for now. Ten eighty. Eighteen minutes, probably two thirds of which we've had the power on. Forty seven point nine volts. Water temperature, where is it, 123, that's the hottest I've ever had it. And that's it for this test. We got to 1084, cooling off rapidly.